Hello to all my friends out there. Hi, you guys. Here we are another day. I'm in San Diego. And so you might be wondering, Rhoda, um, why do you get your Coke in that really, really bad area? Well, it just so happens that this McDonald's has the best Diet Coke. It's cold when it comes out. It, the carbonation and the syrup is always right. So, you know, I swing by to get Coke here. I'm supposed to be cutting down. Okay, um, I was, uh, you guys may have noticed that a couple of my videos um, were taken down. Um, you know, I will do stuff not realizing it's controversial, but then the AI lets you know. And so I take it down because I don't want to strike. Another thing, if you have AI, if you have a YouTube channel and your um, content is grievous enough, they will just wipe your channel off now. So I try to avoid that. I think I might have a strike or two. And you know what? And how does Sally Suburbia get a strike? Well, it takes talent. So today, on the video I just posted, I decided that I would... I'll try to show you what I did. They just wiped out the title. It wasn't the content. It was... I decided to make my um, title like um, SOS. So it was like... Um, it was evacuation... And I put um, a less than, and I put um, a forward slash. I had, um, what was it, uh, car, living, anyway. And I had these less than and forward in the title. You know, like SOS, and then at the end, so it was car, living, uh, what was it? Anyway, budget, I don't think that was it. And then I put like uh, two of these at the end. Well, the AI didn't like it. So, you know, they just didn't post my... So you have to be careful, you guys, if you have a channel. That cracked me up. Okay, I was thinking about uh, Afghanistan and what I'm seeing over there. So... I'm gonna to talk to you guys about what I'm seeing. So uh, that was one of the videos I had to take down and how that is pertinent to America. I'm having to inhale this guy's diesel. Okay, so when I was a nurse, my ability to survive meant I did not pick up the stuff that uh, was lurking around in the hospitals. And there was some pretty bad stuff lurking around in the hospitals. And so if you remember at the beginning of the pandemic, the nurses did catch the great illness because they didn't have gloves and they didn't have masks. So from now on, we want to make sure that we have gloves and we have masks and we have toilet paper in the house because, you know, we had our issues. So um, one of the things we did is we assumed no matter what the the um person look like that they I'm a phlebotomist as well because I figured that would come in handy with the uh, administration of drugs and stuff and just learning stuff so I was going to school you know for years so anyway oh uh, one of the things that we first became aware of is you can't look at a person and tell if they have HIV you can't tell, you can't look at a person and tell what's wrong with them. So we, ha and that's dangerous if you get a needle stick, you know, so while well, drawing blood or whatever. But so what we would do is when we were in hospitals and then they started uh, for patient confidentiality, they didn't necessarily tell us what the person necessarily had. And also I got in some, you know, it just wasn't the profession for me. Um, like, they don't like too much delving into stuff by the, the nurses. So you're like, in a way, flying blind a lot. 
which I don't like, especially if you have the capacity to figure stuff out. So every day we went into the hospital, MRSA's terribly uh, catching, probably a lot worse than the COVID. I'm not saying in all cases, well, yeah, it's very deadly, but so is pneumonia. In the olden days, that'd definitely kill you. A broken leg would kill you a lot of times. So anyway, so as a nurse, we would assume, I don't know you. I don't know what you have or what you don't have. And so I would wear a mask. I wear two masks when I go out. A lot of times in hospitals, I would wear two gloves because if, if, if time was an issue, you could rip one pair of gloves off and, and you would have a pair under there. And I saw the nurses getting very sloppy too. And I, and so what I did is I schooled myself every time I went into the hospital, this is your last day if you are not careful. Every situation, this is your last day if you injure your neck or your back or your shoulder or anything. So anyway, so the way we kept ourselves safe is by being very careful and assuming the worst was danger around surveying the scene you know i told you guys i was an emt as well so now we're getting into uh my ability to survive depends on my ability to manage the world around me say emergency so now we're looking at afghanistan and we're saying hmm it appears that the uh american government was more or less supporting the country. And when we pulled out, it's not looking good over there. So back to here in America, it appears, I hope the diesel is off, it's hot. It appears that the American government is, is supporting large segments of the population. Could this end suddenly? I say to myself, well, well, yeah, what happened in Afghanistan, you know? Uh, they had 20 years. We've had a year to prepare right now. I want to mention these sunglasses. I love these sunglasses. These are uh, Ralph Lauren sunglasses. Someone said you shouldn't buy all those dumb sunglasses. I beg your pardon. I, I love my stuff. That's why I buy it. Okay, so I'm saying, could that happen? Yeah, that could happen. Could some disaster befall us? Yeah, we have fires there. So I'm thinking about, okay, we've got to have water to survive. So what I'm doing is I'm, I've been at this because I have a lot of trash cans. I'm cleaning my trash cans, all of them really good in case I have to store water in there because I don't want my garden to die. We'll get into that in a minute. Uh, food, okay. Food storage is good, but if the disaster is bad, the, the food is going to be uh, wiped out. So what I have to know is, okay, if my food was wiped out, if my whole house was wiped out, I think the best management is a sandwich and a small fruit or a small vegetable. So if I have the meat and I have the bread, so, and my food storage has evolved. I've gone to mostly cans because they're pretty much indestructible and they pretty much last forever. But what do I want to, um, what do I want to store in these cans? I want to store meat in these cans. That's what I want. I don't want like, I don't want to worry about uh, cans of vegetables and fruit because here we have a crop cycle of 60 days and you know I have probably two crop cycles left so I want to store uh, salmon that was a good one during the depression tuna chicken ham ham is good if you're gonna make a little pot of beans you know the little cans and they're five ounces so I told you guys uh, and one of the best things you can ever do is watch those uh, food pantry hauls. That's going to give you so many good ideas on what to get and what you're going to get if you have to go there. 
sardines, potted meat, and Vienna sausage. Okay, so you can have, if you have bread like I did yesterday, I had a bologna, six pieces of thick cut bologna. And then if you go over here to a Dollar Tree, you can get six, I think six or eight eggs, one dollar, and you have bread. So you would have like uh, bread and an egg for breakfast and a sandwich and a small fruit or a small vegetable for uh, lunch. But you could literally survive on a sandwich with a small vegetable and a small fruit. Okay, and then for dinner, and this is what I started a long time ago, but I've tried this and I've tried that. Okay, I, found, I located the skillet bread. And you can make that on a camp stove. You can create an oven by a pan and just put a foil tent or a top on it and cook almost anything you would bake on top of the stove. So uh, let's see, for dinner, fresh meat, you need about two and a half pounds a week and potatoes. So that is cost effective. So you know you have enough protein and nutrients to make it through the day. Okay, there's beans, rice, and vegetables, but I would say that is for an extreme um, emergency. So you know you have your basic food and you can buy these cans pretty much, except for the sardines, I still get those for, I mean the, the salmon, I still get them for $3. And what I like to do is pour stewed, I crush stewed tomatoes, I pour it over the salmon and I bake it with lemon and baked potatoes, that's good. Okay, so food, so you're storing your food and you're planting a garden. So say I was eating sandwiches, I am eating sandwiches. <laughs> I have some tomatoes out there that I've grown, I have some cucumbers, I have some bell peppers I might eat tonight, I have some jalapenos. Okay, I wanted to mention about garden vegetables. Tomatoes, this is going to help you survive. Tomatoes, squash, peppers, and onions. And I have been sticking my onion, you know, the green onions with the roots in the ground, and I have several sprouting up. So by you can do this in a window seal. It's going to help you so much. And I was going to mention to you guys, you know, yesterday I said to the girls at the McDonald's, you guys, you know, I'm doing my YouTube video. Could you give me three uh, mustards, three can three mayonnaise, and three butters? And, and they did. And so I was getting ready to leave pretty late. And there was a guy, you know, living on the street. And I gave him two sandwiches with the mayonnaise and the mustard and a bag of cereal and a banana. See what I mean about the sandwiches and the fruit? Bananas are the cheapest. So once you start, you're not gonna be running out of food at the end of the month either. For one thing, if you're broke, you're gonna go to the food bank. Okay, so now we have water, food, and so we're saying, okay, every day is an emergency. What if the government pulled out all the supports on the American people suddenly? You never know, heat. You want to make sure you have heat. Um, I, I became aware, uh, I think it was this last week, that I wasn't really all that well prepared. So as you're going around, you're saying, oh, I better, you know, fix this and do that if I know it's good for me. Mobility car, okay, or ways out. Okay, in Afghanistan, one of the problems is one way into the airport controlled by the Taliban. But those people know what to do because they're all Islamic. So if you don't break the Islamic law, you, unless of course you were like enemies of the state, but uh, they were desperate to get out. So like here in Southern California, I wanna know every way out of where I live. So I know I can go out to Cotty, I can go out Al Alpine, I can go out, um, north you know towards la so i i want to know ways that i could evacuate if something happened you want to run for the hills here it would be Takati or alpine okay but your car is going to do you no good if you ha have no gas so you want to say okay i'm going to need gas but more important too is cash okay since now when i was a nurse you know every day germs lurking still uh, so every day I'm living as if you know the emergency is kind of here it is kind of here 
So what I'm doing is, is I am suspending all spending, you know, just going down to the basic minimum spending and saving all the rest so I can generate cash. And like, as everybody knows, it is not that easy. But once you kind of get these plans, you, you know, you kind of start to uh, move in the, a forward direction. So when I retired, I said, okay, what I want to do is self-employment. Okay, I sell these when the time is right. I sell this when the time is right. Well, Rhoda, how much would you sell that for? 25 cents. When you have a lot, that's when, you know, it becomes easy to sell your like my clothes i sold them so cheap i got there at seven i left at 9 15 with about a hundred dollars i'm not trying to make a million dollars at the swap meet but i have ebay i have etsy i have youtube and i have the the swap meet all generating small streams of of income okay i got a channel for you guys egypt apartment tour no limit eddie Okay, Eddie is 20, and I just started following him, No Limit Eddie, and right now he is in Egypt, yes. And he's 20 years old, and he's been traveling the world, and I really like uh, his videos. When I was young, I was very adventurous. <laughs> but I like seeing what, first of all, I don't think Eddie, as a mom, I don't think Eddie should be in Egypt, but you know, so Eddie had goals. And one of these goals was, uh, was I guess to get to Egypt. And so he's doing this, you know, he works with this imagination where, what he wants to do to create the reality he has. And I like it. And I noticed his book collection and I want to mention this. One of them was Think and Grow Rich. How to Win Friends and Influence People. Okay, if I buy first editions of those books, I sell them like hotcakes. But the thing about um, Think and Grow Rich is when you get into it, there's a bit of spiritism. Like he would sit at a table and he would imagine Abraham Lincoln, you know, whoever he wanted to imagine. And the thing is, is that is spiritism. Okay, you know the guy, the Q, guy who, the QAnon guy who killed the kids with the, uh, I mean, it was really horrible. So strong possibility that he was mind controlled. You know, there's all kinds of possibilities, but uh, what happens is when you open yourself up to spiritism, you don't know what exactly you're getting because the spirits are very evil and they're very tricky. So you have to be careful. And it's working its way through our culture. And once you're prey to it, it it's a problem. Just being aware that spiritism, like um, I remember uh, the girls that were missing and the guy had, had um, kidnapped them out of the, their neighborhood really and they went to a psychic and she said, your daughter was dead. She wasn't dead, she was right down the street. And also, you know, like all, the thing about spirits is, is sometimes they tell you good stuff, but they could be telling you bad stuff and they could be leading you in a bad direction. So you gotta be very careful with uh, spiritism. Now I wanna mention milk, cheese, yogurt, and butter. Okay, so, what, you've got your sandwiches, you've got your small fruit and your vegetable, you've got your meat, you've got your potatoes, you've got your vegetables and fruit, milk, cheese, yogurt, and bread and butter. So one of the most important things to do is protect your dairy and your oil. During the depression, there wasn't enough oil and sugar. So you want to make sure uh, I saw shrinkflation. It was at Dollar Tree. The, the sugar is like this now. Probably a pound. So while you still can, maybe stockpile some sugar. My grandmother said there wasn't enough sugar. And they didn't eat that much sugar. But you know, you need sugar for your yeast, but you can use honey. 
But okay, milk. So you want to make sure. I always use canned milk and uh, powder milk, but what I start doing is trying to buy the best quality food I can now in case something happens and we should have to do indoor hardship, then you know we would be better nourished to do that. Cheese, I showed you guys, I was so happy when I learned how to make mozzarella cheese. It is so easy, all you need is milk, uh, vinegar or lemon and uh, salt. Yogurt is very easy to make. You can use your own yogurt after you make it as the culture and butter. You just whip up your own butter in the blender. Um, I'm shopping in the thrift stores, you know, every day, you know, for stuff I sell. And uh, I did see, I did see a couple of the vases of jewelry. You know, packed with junk jewelry. But since I'm not going to the swap meet right now, what I used to do is I would say, okay, you have a, a jar of junk jewelry. I will wait until you reduce it half price. Then I will buy it. So you guys check out, uh, check out and subscribe Egypt apartment tour, no limits, Eddie. Uh, you will like it. And so now I'm a, about my day. Please like, comment, and, and be saying to yourself, okay, if something happens, what the world am I going to do? Like, if the power goes out, am I going to freeze? Um, is it going to be so hot, it's going to kill me? If, if I can't get into the store, can I survive, and how long? Things like that. All right, I will see you later, and God bless you all.